today is a very auspicious day, the disappearance day of three Vaishnavas, pure devotees. That is why we are singing now this song. Je Anilo Prema Dhan Koruna Prachur. One who has brought into this world the wealth of Prema, means love of Krishna, being full of mercy, Koruna Prachur, full, plenty, where Heno Prabhu Kothagelo Acharjatakun, but oh my Prabhu, where did he go now? Acharjatakur means when the Vaishnavas they disappear, they enter into Nitya then we feel separation, grief from them. When we have relation with them, then we feel separation, grief. And then Narutan Thakur is further saying about where did Rupa go, Sanatan, Raghunadas, and Gopal Bhatta Goswami, all where did they go, and Mahaprabhu. So in separation grief he is expressing, so this song is to be sung on such days. And he is also telling that this pain of separation from Vaishnava is intolerable. It is more easy to tolerate to enter into fire or to dash head in the stone than to bear the separation grief from Vaishnava. So Narutan Thakur is crying, not getting their association, because he knows the value of association with Vaishnavas. They are most there. So today is the disappearance day of Rasikananda Prabhu. I will tell in brief because that one topic is there. Uh, he appeared in Raina village. His parents were very pious and devotionally minded. Also, Rasikananda Prabhu was very devotionally minded from birth. And then he was married and he went to live in that village from where his wife was. There he felt this urge to find a bona fide spiritual master for guidance on spiritual path. So he was praying very intensely and he entered into trance in Samadhi, fully absorbed in that prayer and losing all external consciousness. Then he heard the voice, you don't worry any longer. You will, your guru is Shamananda Prabhu. You will meet him soon. So don't worry. Then he came out. Then that whole night he was in separation grief. He was chanting the name of Shamananda Prabhu. Shamananda, Shamananda, Shamananda. In grief, separation grief he was chanting. Then in the end of night he little uh, slept. Then he got a dream. In a dream he saw his Gurudev. Shamananda Prabhu, first darshan, then Shamananda Prabhu told him, don't worry, you will see me today only. So when Rasikananda Prabhu woke up, then in the morning he was very eager where he will meet Gurudev, then he saw that Shamananda Prabhu was coming with his disciples surrounded and they were loudly chanting Nama Sankirtan, and Rasikananda Prabhu was attracted by that unearthly beauty of pure devotee, Gurudev. Then he immediately bowed down to him and fully surrendered. And Shamananda Prabhu also initiated. And when uh, Rasikananda Prabhu fully dedicated to his lotus feet, so because of that he got full powers from Guru, means that devotional power came. Whoever is a good disciple, he will get that. Uh, there are many disciples, but not all are of equal status, according to the degree of submission. 
one who is a very good disciple, means fully surrendered, he will also be a good teacher because he will get that power. And he himself is doing, that is a charge. So Rasikananda Prabhu became very powerful preacher. He rescued many sinful persons and Muslims and big rich persons also and kings and all, everyone. He's very known in Orissa, Rasikananda Prabhu. Household devotee, but pure devotee, a charger. And it is known that he is a manjari in Krishna Lila, but name is not given. Uh, and today is his disappearance. So after preaching for a long time, he rescued so many in Orissa. Then one day, and yes, there is one meeting with Shamananda Prabhu also, they made one festival together. Then with disciples, they went to that Kir Chora Gopinath temple, you know, the Gopinath who stole the Kir for Madhavendra Puri. There, Rasikananda Prabhu suddenly merged into or entered into Gopinath Diti. That was his disappearance. Lila. Some Acharjas, they do like that because they are not ordinary persons, they are spiritual persons, they don't have material body. Some Acharjas, they play the pastime of like giving up body and Samadhi is made, or like Gopal Guru Goswami, Agni Samadhi, like this. But he showed, he just entered into Gopinath and his disciples also. So there in Remuna, in that Kirchura Gopinath, you will find his Samadhi, but only Pushpa Samadhi because that garland which he had fell down when, they end, when he entered. So today is his disappearance day. I'm bowing down to him and praying for his causeless mercy to kindly forgive for all offenses which I may have committed to him knowingly and unknowingly and to bestow service of his lotus feet and the lotus feet of his object to worship Gaur Nitananda Prabhu and Radha Krishna. Today is also our previous Guru in our Guru Parampara, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, disappearance day. He appeared in Bangladesh, but then he came to Brindavan and was doing intense bhajan. And he became realized so, and he became the chief among all Bajananandi sadhus in Brindavan. That is why named Sarvo, Vaishnava Sarvo, chief among them all. And he gave many teachings there in Brindavan also. Some two disciples, they came left house and they came and Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj engaged them to work in the garden and they were surprised why why he's not telling us to hear Bhagavatam and chant Harinam sitting in lonely place meditating on Radha Krishna Lila. Then they could not directly speak with Gurudev being afraid. Then they went to Bhaktivinoda Thakur because they knew he's very dear to him. And they expressed, our Gurudev is giving us this order. So why? We, we cannot understand. Then Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, oh, you, really? You got this order. You are so fortunate. I am not that much fortunate. Jagannath, our Gurudev, he is not ordinary person. He is direct associate of Krishna. He is directly serving him. So he knows that now, your senses are not under your control. And if he will tell you to sit in one place and chant, then you will not be able to do it. And also your mind will go here and there. So you will not get any Bhagavatam you will hear, you cannot understand. So out of compassion, he gave you this order. Seeing your competency, 
that your senses should be engaged in the service of Krishna. That garden is not ordinary garden. It is a garden from where vegetables Jagannath Das Babaji will offer to Krishna. So you, if you work in that garden, then your energy will be used, utilized for the service of Krishna and your senses will become inclined and you will become inclined to serve Krishna. Then actually you can chant properly Harina. Otherwise not, with some ulterior desire that will not be. And you will gain the qualification to understand Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is about devotion to Krishna. So practically you must be engaged. So then, uh, so you do that seva, it is direct order. That will be service to Krishna. While you are doing that work in garden, you can also chant, not with mala, but with your mouth. And when you have some time, then you also chant some rounds on mala. So you do this. It is correct. Then in this way. And Babaji Maharaj also was opposed to chanting those invented mantras. Bhaja Gaur, uh, no. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Hare Krishna Hare Ram Shri Radhe Govinda. And another one, Nita Go Radesham Japa Hare Krishna Hare Ram. They were chanting. He said, No, you have to chant Panchadatta Mantra and you have to chant Maha Mantra and without offenses. And there was one, one person came to Brindavan uh, and he was speaking Bhagavatam to earn money. Really, he was very aristocratic birth and also he had a lot of knowledge and his lectures on Bhagavatam were very attractive but motive was wrong. So all the real Vaishnavas they did not pay any attention there. Then when that person became a little thoughtful and he asked Jagannath Das Babaji then Babaji Maharaj told him your motive is not correct. You should speak Bhagavatam to satisfy Krishna, not for earning money and all this. So, by the explanation of Jagannath Das Babaji, then he understood and he became humble and was doing bhajan properly. So, in this way, many teachings Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj gave in Vrindavan and about Brajabasis, but today there is not so much time many teachings. Then after Brindavan, he came to Navadip and was doing bhajan there in Kulia. And when Shila, he also met Bhaktino Thakur, they met in Brindavan and also in one village where they fasted on Ekadashi and whole day, whole night they were not sleeping, they were discussing Krishna Katha. And in the morning they were doing Nagar Sankirtan with all the villagers. And Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj became so ecstatic that that ecstasy entered into all who were there present. They were crying and because Babaji was a Siddha Mahatma, pure devo, uh, realized soul. And he also came one time in, to Kolkata to visit Bhaktino Thakur. There Bhaktino Thakur took one photo of him and that time Bimala Prasad was a young boy, means Prabhupada. So he, when Jagannath Das Babaji came to know that he is very good in astrology calculation, then he told him, okay, then you should calculate Vaishnav calendar. You should make with all the appearances of Supreme Lord and all the appearances and disappearances of Vaishnavas. You have to make this. So this calendar we are following, ordered by Jagannath as Babaji Maharaj, and he told it is Vishnu Priya Devi's appearance day on that pa Panchami, Vasanta Panchami, and so many teachings. So in Navadip also, you know, Bhaktino Thakur got that vision, transcendental vision from Kulia. He saw some light on the other side. Then he was researching by old maps and everything, then he came to know that there in Mayapur actually is the actual birthplace of 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not here, on this side. Some were claiming, but that is not correct. So he, by all Shastra and by maps, old maps, he, and also by some mystical visions, and he went there and he asked people, why there, you are Muslims, why you are growing Tulsi tree there? We are Muslims. Then they said, yes, we are not growing. Whatever we sow there, either uh, eggplant or tomato or potato or whatever we plant there, nothing comes out, only Tulsi comes out. That was also mystical. So then, uh, Bhakti Notaku requested Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj to see that place. Then he was carried by, because he was so old already, he had to be carried on the head of his sevak. But when he came to that place in Mayapur, birthplace of Mahapur, suddenly he jumped out of that basket and was wildly dancing and chanting Jaya Sachinandan Gaurahuri, Jaya Sachinandan Gaurahuri and dancing. All were surprised, what is this? Babaji Maharaj cannot walk, but here he is dancing. Then they, they said, what is, what is happening, Babaji Maharaj? What is it? Then he said, you don't see? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates, they are doing kirtan here. You don't see? Because how we can see with this material eyes? Those who have devotional spiritual eyes, they can see. So Jagannath Das Babaji saw and he confirmed, yes, this is the actual birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he ordered Diti Seva should be established here in one building, Gauranga Mahaprabhu and Vishnu Priya and Lakshmi Priya, two wives. One building, another building, small Nimai and Sachi Mata and Jagannath Vishnu. And accordingly, this was done first in cottage, but later on Srila Bhakti Sarastakur developed that place, now Jogopit, you saw, so that is Jagannandas Babaji, and he uh, also appeared in dream of Prabhupada and ordered him to preach, and on today's day, doing bhajan there in Today, on this day, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj doing bhajan, he disappeared from this world in that place where his samadhi is also there. We are visiting there in Navadip. So I'm going down to Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Our Gurudev wrote his biography, you will find in the book in more details, and also Jagannath Ashtaka is there, and many teachings he gave. So I am going down to him, praying for his causeless mercy, to kindly forgive for all my offenses, which I may have done knowingly, unknowingly, and to bestow service of his lotus feet, and the lotus feet of his object of worship, Shri Gauranitaranda Prabhu and Radha Krishna. That is very nice place there in Navadip. His Bhajan Kutir and Samadhi is there. Jagannathas Babaji also visited Surabi Kunja. When Bhakti Thakur was staying in Surabi Kunja, that time Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj came and there was a big Harinam Sankirtan festival there. Then already he disappeared. Later on, Bhakti Thakur got another place that is Svananda Sukada Kunja. But that first place, Rabi Kunja, that is where Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj also set his holy footprints there. And Today also is the disappearance day of our Parangurde. He also appeared in Bangladesh and then 
he came to Kolkata, and you know, we are hearing his biography, I cannot say all. And was crying in separation grief from Krishna, then Narad Goswami appeared to him in dream and told him what that mantra. But when Parangurdev woke up, he could not remember a full mantra. Then he became more eager. Then he renounced house and went to Himalaya up and three days continuously calling uh, God from the core of heart without eating, sleeping, drinking, nothing. Then same thing happened when he was fully absorbed losing all external consciousness, then he heard the voice, you don't worry, you will find your Guru where you left, in Bengal. Then Parangurudev came back and he met one sadhu on the way, he told him what happened, that sadhu confirmed, yes, it was real, it is not imagination, it was real, you go back. So Parangurudev came back, he met Prabhupada in Mayapur, then in Calcutta he joined, Gauriyama and soon became his one, their most disciple. Prabhupada used to send him in advance to organize for preaching programs and for collection also and for preaching and all seva he was doing. Prabhupada also wanted to send him to Western countries to preach. First one, but one another Disciple, household disciple said there in England, the ladies, they will become attracted to him because he's very beautiful and young. So there will be some disturbance. So better you, you send some old sannyasi than Prabhupada sent. So, but and before this appearance of Prabhupada in Sarbuk Gauriamat, Prabhupada told him, the responsibility of Guru Seva is fully yours from A to Z. Like Radharani is thinking, service of Krishna is fully mine, the responsibility. If someone comes to assist, I am grateful, but the responsibility is mine. I, I should not be angry on anyone else if someone is not serving. No, because everything is my responsibility. So in the same way, Prabhupada told to Parangurudev just before this appearance that all seva for your Gurudev is your sole responsibility. If someone comes to assist you, that is okay, you should be grateful, but don't demand and don't be angry. Because another one disciple was complaining, not Parangurudev, but another one, so, but Prabhupada gave this teaching. So after the disappearance of Prabhupada, he was first staying in Chaitanya Math, and he was a very successful preacher, also taking disciples in Assam because Prabhupada ordered him. So soon he became very influential and in Chaitanya Math, another one, Sanyasi, he told to his guru that if he will stay in this month, then you cannot be prominent here. So somehow it is actually by the will of Krishna they told him to go by some trick. But that was the will of Krishna. So Parangurev without complaining anything, he came out, rented place in Calcutta and started preaching his own and soon became very successful and he opened 24 months all over India, big mats, and organized all Parikramas, Brajamandal, Navati, Puri, South India, North India, so many publications, all full, same like Prabhupada. Here we see in the song which we were singing before, uh, these 11 verses in glorification of Parangurudev. There is one line today, it uh, touched me more. Prabhupada Pader Pita Deha Matim. He offered 
his whole self, his body, mind, everything. He offered full to Prabhupada. And for the sake of serving Prabhupada to go on with his mission, Guru Karja Krite Jati Veshadram. He was Brahmachari, but was very successful. So all God brothers, they told him, if really you want to serve Prabhupada's mission, then you have to take sanya. So on the order of his God brothers, senior God brothers, he took sanyas and he was preaching. So after preaching everywhere, even to foreign devotees or foreign people, those who came. Parangurudev didn't go out, but his English is very beautiful. You will find some articles. He spoke directly in English or some letters like this. Very beautiful. So after preaching all over everywhere, then Krishna called him. And on today's day, he disappeared. But before disappearance, he gave this Harikata, which we have to hear today. Our Gurudev used to recite this and explain this many times. This Harikata. One, his disciple, our Gurudev explained to us, he took Harinam, but due to previous sanskaras, he was, when he was going to some Dharamshala, then he would offer everywhere to Shiva, to all worship he would offer due to previous samskara. So now he came to Parangurudev, he was new devotee. Uh, he came to Parangurudev to get some personal instructions, but Parangurudev was not allowed to speak by doctors because of his uh, illness pastimes. So our Gurudev requested, Parangurudev, you please speak at least some words to him. He came from North India to Calcutta just to hear from you. Then Parangurudev suddenly called everyone to his room, all Brahmacharis, everyone to his room. And he started to speak this Harikata. And our Hrishikesh Maharaj, you saw him in Calcutta before he was in charge. He knew fast handwriting. So he wrote it down, all this. And this is his last message of Parangurudev. I am not, I am not well. And the doctor has warned me not to speak too much. It is quite possible that I will not stay much longer in this world. I am telling you that to engage in a proper practice of devotional service, you must be fixed in the worship of the ultimate object of your devotion. When a woman is not faithful to her husband, when she loves someone else, she cannot give herself to his service. Infidelity and exclusive devotion cannot go together. Means if she's not chaste, thinking of someone else and exclusive devotion, you cannot have at the same time. For this reason, a faithful and devoted wife will never allow anyone to take place of her husband, nor will she criticize anyone else. She will not condemn her brother-in-law her mother-in-law or her father-in-law or anyone else who is related to her husband, but will rather give each of them his or her due respect. In the same way, if you wish to advance in devotional service, worship Krishna alone. Do not criticize other gods and goddesses, means them gods and goddesses, but think of them as servants of Krishna and give them their due respect in that consciousness. But be careful to never give them the place which is due to the ultimate object of your devotion. 
I'm giving you this instruction. Give this matter a little thought. You are a competent person. You are highly qualified, means educated, but you don't understand this tradition yet. In the Gauriya Sampradaya, in the lineage of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the religious tradition of devotion to Krishna, dedicated devotees worship Krishna exclusively. If you put other gods and goddesses on the same level as Krishna, you are making a mistake. Don't forget this. And in some previous lectures, already you will find, Parangurdev gave scriptural evidences from Padma, Puran and other scriptures about this point. You should, only Krishna is worshipable, but that does not mean one will criticize other demigods, but will give due respect and pray for devotion to Krishna. Don't forget this. Not all gods and goddesses are equal, nor all avatars of Vishnu. Ete Changsha Kalah Punksha Krishna to Bhagavan Swayam from Bhagavatam. After discussing all the different avatars, Matsya, Kurma, Ram, Rishinga, etc., Veda Vyas says that none of these avatars is Krishna himself. Some of them are expansions, some are partial manifestations, but Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Jhar Bhagavata Hoite Anir Bhagavata Soyan Bhagavan Shabder Tahate Isata. The epithet Soyan Bhagavan, that means original Supreme Lord, can only be used for him from whom the characteristics of Godhead are derived. All others, other forms, they are getting from him, avatars. Om Purnam Ada. Purnam Idam. This is all avatars coming from him. They are not different from him, but still he is Swayam Bhagavan, original. No one is equal to Krishna. Everyone should keep this in mind and worship Krishna exclusively and with dedication. Devotion will not increase by making a great sound and fury, like very loudly and I am great devotee, like, well, like no, how much you are really dedicated from your soul to serve Krishna, that, that is real devotion, not external pomp and these things. Everyone should remember this. We will not condemn any other gods or goddesses but we'll pray to them to give us the blessing that we remain fixed on our supreme object of worship, Krishna. Our Gurudev used to say, it is meant for us. We should deeply think about this point. Further, Parangurudev is telling, this was in his room in Calcutta, in his Bhajan Kutir. I have registered the mat. The mat is no one's personal property. But that doesn't mean that each of us becomes boss or becomes indisciplined. I met many disciples of Parangurdev and one also told me when our Gurudev was here, there was, there was discipline. Parangurdev was very big and very strong personality. And without saying, but automatically everyone was very disciplined, automatically. Even if you hear some Harikata, his Bangla Harikata, you will understand how, what kind of person he is, what strength and how, what, with what authority 
he's speaking. When he used to visit Shila Bhakti Rakak Shidradev Gosai Maharaj, they were behaving like children when they were alone because they are friends from the time of Prabhupada. They were preaching together everywhere, in Madras and everywhere. And when Prabhupada heard, he said, yes, this is my preaching party. Shidhar Maharaj and Parangurde and some other. So, uh, but in front of disciples, even Shidhar Maharaj, you will find in his some recordings, he said, Madhav Maharaj is very careful how he is behaving in front of disciples so that they should not, they have no scope to deviate or to, to do something wrong. Very strong discipline. This, it is proper. It must be like this. Otherwise, we will be deprived of actual benefit. So, the, or become sin disciplined. By doing so, this life will have been wasted. Therefore, management as him is necessary for the proper running of the mat. One person will be named Acharjo, he will be the headman or president. When I am gone, one person will take my place. Who will that be? My spiritual master did not like the idea that there should be a vote to decide a matter. To elect an acharjo is not in accordance with the principles of Hari Bhakti. God himself will decide who is the acharjo. The acharjo is the person who is most dear to the Lord. Who will make that decision? The proper arrangement is when the Lord himself says, this person is the one who is most dear to me. Therefore, the rule of the disciplic succession is that the choice should come from above. Not that conditioned souls is here. The correct process is that the order should be given from higher up. From the worldly point of view, everyone can get together to elect a leader. But the correct process is that the Lord himself indicates which devotee is filled with love for him and he makes him the acharjo. He authorizes him for this service. Not some people will gather together and they will say yes, like they will proclaim, yes, he's God, but that, does, that is not true that he's God. They are saying, so like that, no one can make a charge by this voting like this. No, a charge is a charge, one who is there to Krishna, who has love for him. When, yes, here we will come. This is the process approved by scripture. When Srila Prabhupada, means Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Goswami Thakur, was exhibiting pastimes of illness, he asked the solicitor, Mr. J. N. Basu, to write up a constitution. We heard that the constitution could be made according to one of the two methods, by nomination or by election. Finally, the constitution was written according to the later method, but Srila Prabhupada did not like it, and he rejected it. I and two or three others were personally present when it happened. You cannot decide who is a sadhu, an acharjo, or a realized soul by taking a vote on the matter. Or some organization, they wanted to make a vote on Siddhanta. What will be Siddhanta? We will vote. Majority voting, that will be Siddhanta. You cannot get, you, that is not process to arrive at Siddhanta. Siddhanta is Siddhanta. What Shastra says, what a realized soul says. And you have to understand it properly through submission, through revelation. That is Siddhanta. You cannot vote. And majority will say, yeah, that is Siddhanta. Okay. <laughs> it is not like that. Someone will say one thing, 
another something else and the debate will simply go on. Therefore, the proper method is that the Lord himself will choose which person will be honored with the position of a charge. The scripture enjoins us to respect this process. This process is not followed only in the Gurya Sampradaya. It can be seen in every Vaishnav Sampradaya, the Ramanuja, Madhva, Nimbarka and Vishnu Sami lineages. This is the way that the disciplic succession is maintained. Therefore, the process ordained in the disciplic succession must be followed. I have therefore discussed with my senior God brothers who are a part of the Gauri Amad Brotherhood and I have decided to make Shriman Bhakti Valaptirta Maharaj my successor and president in my absence. He discussed with Shila Bhakti Rakak Shidar Dev Gosai Maharaj Chila Bhakti Komu Chanta Gosai Maharaj, Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj and other who were present that time, uh, God Brothers. And when she, he came to Shila Shidar Maharaj, he said, he asked him, who you think I should make a charge of? Then Shila Shidar Maharaj smiled and he said, there is no need to make him a charger. He is already ready-made a charger. No need to make him. Already ready-made. Already there. Still to Maharaj. Then Parang will say, yes, I am also thinking in this way. So you are confirming. So in this way it is because it, he must be realized soon. Then, then he knows what is Shastra saying and he knows, means he himself is doing that. He is fully devoted to Krishna and by his own example he is teaching others and Krishna is authorizing him to do this service, to engage others in the service of Krishna. That is a charge. You cannot make a charge by some vote and yes, no, Krishna can make. those who are completely surrendered to him. When I have gone, Parangurdev continuing, when I have gone, that does not give you all an excuse to behave just as you please. The defining characteristic of a Vaishnava is following a devotee. The highest order devotee is the one who follows in the footsteps of a devotee for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. The Lord's blessings follow the blessings of the devotee. When a devotee is merciful to someone, the Lord's mercy follows. So we have to follow devotee. That is the way. Not directly uh, thinking, I will directly serve Krishna and you bless me. No. When we are serving the devotee, following him, then automatically Krishna's grace will be there in the form of his service. This is the essence of my instruction to you. This is the essence. Again, the defining, I am again repeating this. Because Parangurdev here is saying, this is the essence of my instruction. So it is very important. The defining characteristic of a Vaishnava is following a devotee. Vaishnava Nugatya. The highest order devotee is the one who follows the footsteps of a devotee for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. The Lord's blessings follow the blessings of the devotee. When a devotee is merciful to someone, the Lord's mercy follows. So our duty is to please devotee, to serve devotee. When he will bless, then Krishna is Krishna's blessing follows that. This is the essence of my instruction to you. Please follow it. I have written in more detail elsewhere. So tomorrow I will continue reading this last message of Parangurde because many important points are there uh, for the how to go on after his disappearance, what are his teachings. So 
on February 27, 1979 from Calcutta Math, that room, on that bed, in the midst of Harinam Sankirtan, Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj was there whole time and also during night time he was chanting in library and at 9 a.m. in the morning he, Parangurdev, disappeared from that room entered into Nitalila of Radha Krishna, that forenoon pastimes of Radha Krishna. It was also the disappearance day of Jagannath Das Babaji and Rasikananda Dev Goswami. And then the devotees, they took his transcendental body from Calcutta to Mayapur. And his samadhi was performed there in our Matthew. So now it will be new one inaugurated soon, new building. Uh, so under the guidance of Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj, he was there for Samadhi. And then there were Viraha Sabhas, uh, those meetings in separation. And the first one in Calcutta was presided by Srila Bhakti Hirdoy Bongosai Maharaj, that recording is still there. You will find on bbtirta.org in Bangla. He's speaking about Parangurdev and he's crying because they were together. And he told, our Gurudev used to tell us that Srila Bhakti Hiridoy Bongo Sai Maharaj told, we all are God brothers, but due to some practical reasons preaching, we, we, we were little changing things. But your Gurudev, Madhav Gosai Maharaj, he followed Prabhupada exactly. No change. Same thing. So, it is my request and my order, also my instruction, you should continue like this. You should follow how your Gurudev was falling because he did everything exactly the same as Prabhupada was doing. So that was in that meeting, then Samadhi was performed. Prabhupada opened so many mats all over India and schools also and printing presses, free clinics, Sanskrit schools, libraries, magazines, all. If you will read that biography, our Gurudev wrote in two volumes, big one, then you can understand he's not an ordinary person. So today is Srila Parangurdev's disappearance day. Tomorrow I will continue with his last message because it is important to meditate on those teachings. Our Gurudev told it is very important. So tomorrow we'll continue. Today there was also a big festival there in Mayapur, they took Parangurip Titi there in, on the stage and so many Vaishnavas came to speak his glories and there was big feast prasad. So I saw some on Facebook live, some devotees they made. Otherwise, I was there on his appearance day in Mayapur on Utana Kadashi, this two days festival in the same manner. Parangudep is brought to stage and so many Vaishnavas for two days they will sing his glories and big feast. One, one day a Kadashi Prasad feast, next day all the rice and Doka. Doka must be there. That is Parangudev's favorite uh, Prasad made of Mung Dal, some cubits. Uh, you make a paste from Dal and you dry so that it is uh, like this, then you make cubits and fry in oil and then in some sauce you make that. Very good. <laughs> that you, you will get if you come on that day, you will get that. So today is Srila Parangulips. His glory is unlimited. His mercy is unlimited. And his uh, 
Mercy is our Gurudev. His mercy. He is giving that mercy. We are getting from Gurudev. We are getting from Gurudev's mercy. Gurudev is bringing and explaining and conveying everything. So I'm going down to Shila Parangurde and praying his kindness mercy to kindly forgive for any offenses which I may have committed knowingly, unknowingly, and to bestow service of his lotus feet and the lotus feet of his object to worship, Guru Gauranga Radha Krishna. Also, I am going down to Gurudev, who is not different from him. His mercy, not different from him. Praying his causeless mercy. 